Good morning, and welcome to worship on this Sunday, July 4th, our Independence Day, a day of independence in Christ and a day to celebrate our independence as a people, as citizens of a nation together. We begin this morning taking the first steps towards our own independence by beginning with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of Mammon, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ in seeking God's abundance, let us take the first steps in the Spirit towards independence by confessing our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways, so turn us again to you, gracious God. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, who is the manna from heaven, you are fed and you are nourished. By Jesus, who is the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, who is the bread of life, you are shown God's great mercy. You are forgiven, and you are loved into abundant life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This morning's Gospel comes to us from the sixth chapter of Mark. Jesus came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, Where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that, he, that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two, and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel. Have you ever heard of Johnny Cash, Bob Hope, or Steve Jobs? Do you know who any of these people are? Bob Hope, Johnny Cash, Steve Jobs. 
All of these are famous Americans, pop culture icons. But unfortunately, they're all gone now. So you could say that we as Americans have no cash, we have no hope, we have no jobs. I uh, once walked into my barber, and this was back when I had hair, and I said that I wanted my hair cut like Tom Cruise. So the first thing you had to do was get out a cushion. Uh, I once bought a packet of Haribo gummies. They were Star Wars version Haribo gummies, and they were the Star Wars version, and it was like all Wookiees. They were a bit too chewy. Uh, sometimes I lose myself in thought. I think about a lot. Sometimes I lose myself in thought. I think about Edward Scissorhands, and I wonder what in the world he's doing these days with all this touch screen technology. Can you follow any of that? Lots of pop culture references in there, right? Are you able to follow any of that? Today is Sunday, a day that we've gathered to sit before God's word. Sunday, the Sabbath, the day of worship. But it's also July 4th, the day that we celebrate our nation's freedoms and liberty. And so I'm thinking about freedom and liberty, but I'm doing that uh, in a way that considers the Sabbath and that it's the 4th of July, how these things all fit together. And at this point, I'm thinking about how American pop culture is, right? Uh, if you think of America, you think of fields of wheat, you think of the Rockies, and you think of the states, and you think of the liberties, you think of people laying their life on the line for freedom. You think of uh, Route 66, apple pie, but maybe no part of that is as large as pop culture. All of us, as Americans, are a part of pop culture. What if today, Sunday, July 4th, something of pop culture has a thing to tell us about freedom, about where we've been and how we felt, and about who we are now. What if this sermon is better told through the eyes of pop culture? But what if it's really an exploration of freedom? I started with all those jokes, pop culture references, uh, but this is a true story. It has to do with pop culture, but it's really happening. Have you uh, ever heard of Britney Spears. Do you remember who Britney Spears is? Do you know who that is? Can you remember anything that she's done? Any song that she's played or any time you've seen her in the news? Uh, she's a judge on X Factor. Uh, she's done a Las Vegas residency. Can you think of anything of the story of Britney Spears? She's been in the news a lot lately. Britney Spears has been all over the news and maybe there's nothing more American than pop culture, but because it's Sunday and it's July 4th both together, it's a day to consider freedom, and maybe Britney has a way of being in a pop culture, whether we like it or not, icon, and telling us a little bit about freedom, and maybe then we're free to hear the gospel that is given to us from the sixth chapter of Mark today. Do you know who Britney Spears is? Do you know how, how much she's been in the news lately? Do you know why she's been in the news lately? Britney Spears has been a pop star for a number of years. All the way back into the 90s when I was like a high school and college student, Britney Spears had her pop hits and she was all over MTV back when they used to play videos and I remember her from that. Uh, in 2008, Britney Spears had a sort of public difficulty. And maybe there's something in there about mental health and something to think about, how underneath the surface of being a pop star and a pop icon and a person who people look to, that underneath there was all sorts of pressure and there was all sorts of thinking about what it means to be free underneath all of this. In 2008, uh, she had a very public sort of 
few incidents. She was being made fun of all over the place, you know, as being uh, sort of bimbo or whatever, a uh, pop star, and this is part of being American too, tabloids and watching people rise and fall and all that sort of thing. And this is very American. It's as American as apple pie. But in 2008, uh, Britney Spears went into uh, treatment, and as part of that treatment, she entered into a conservatorship where she no longer was free. She lost much of what we would think of as freedom. And now her dad controls with a lawyer all of her decisions. So this is Sunday, July 4th, and I'm thinking about freedom. I'm thinking about what it is to be American. Pop culture is, of course, part of what it is to be American. So I'm thinking about that, and I'm thinking about what the gospel has to say about our freedom and how all these things work together. Britney Spears is a pop star. She uh, rose to all this fame. We paid all sorts of attention to her. We see her name, and she's in the news now, and we sort of look at her, and, and maybe we're aghast at some of the things she does. Uh, pop icons are to be thrown under the bus and also admired, and so we have this strange relationship with her. Uh, but she lives uh, in this place that is uh, seemingly un-American. She has no freedom or no liberty to make any choices for herself anymore. Uh, Britney's conservatorship means, and this is true, this is literal, uh, that, it, that she recently wanted to change the cabinets in her kitchen. She is a multi, 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 multi millionaire. She should be able to do this. Uh, but she could not because her father wouldn't let her, because her conservatorship would not let her. Her freedom is not what it seems. She is not able to work or decline work on her own. Her conservatorship does this. And though we live in America on July 4th and as Christians uh, on a Sunday, thinking about how free we are, maybe this is an example of what freedom really is. A thing that we talk about, but a place that's much more difficult to let ourselves live in. Maybe we're under more of a conservatorship than we think. Uh, Brittany would like to start a family. She has someone that's a significant other that she's in love with. She'd like to get married. She'd like to start a family. And because of her conservatorship, she has no freedom and no liberty to do that. There might not be anything more American than pop culture. I don't know if you remember who Brittany Spears is, but maybe she is the best example of who we are as Americans and who we are before Christ as broken people, maybe she's a cipher for this. Because though while we believe in freedom on the 4th of July and on the Sunday, the truth is, is that often we live under a conservatorship, a conservatorship, that we talk about freedom. We talk about, uh, um, you know, being able to pull ourselves up our, by our bootstraps, make decisions for ourselves. We talk about Christ died and Christ died for us, so Christ freed us to live how we would like. But then uh, we understand the madness of sheer freedom. And so we know that, uh, you know, like the idea of just um, living without that voice in our head that says, well, that's not realistic. You have bills to pay and you have things to do. You have guilt and you're sinful, and that voice whispers in our ear. And so we, in truth, tend to live under this conservatorship. We talk about freedom, we talk about our freedoms, we make pop culture jokes, and we uh, hope to be the land of the free, and the home of the brave, and we believe in all that stuff, but then at the end of the day, uh, we're sort of locked in by all of our obligations and expectancies, by the voice that whispers in our head that says we're not pretty enough, or we're too out of shape, or we're too uh, sinful, or we have this bad habit, and uh, we live under the conservatorship of that. And because we're supposed to be free, we don't really know how to talk about that. We can talk to people about the weather, or about Star Wars, or about the pop song, or whatever, but it becomes difficult for us to really attain freedom. And maybe that's why we're gathered here today. Maybe that's why you've tuned into this. Because it's Sunday, July 4th, and we could all use some independence, right?
So beyond all the pop culture stuff, and beyond freedom and the possible conservatorship, we're gathered together today to sit before God's Word. And God's Word comes to us from the sixth chapter of Mark. And it'd be easy to see, or easy to fall into, or easy to uh, think about uh, some of the broken parts of this, the conservatorship parts of this. Because we see the story of Jesus who is out and is beyond and is living in freedom and is pulling himself into who God wants him to be and seems to be living into freedom. He's healing people and people are living in expectancy and are gathering around him and uh, he's having to battle whether he's going to be his own pop culture figure uh, and how to deal with all that and he's trying to heal but he comes home and he discovers that at home like Britney Spears with her dad and like ourselves with our own voice there's this conservatorship and instead of uh, freedom and openness and give me your poor and give me your huddled masses and give me your tired and care and living in expectancy and hope and the glass half full Everything is limitation and fearfulness. The people of Jesus' hometown are like, who are these people that Jesus is bringing back? Where did he hear these ideas? How can this guy, who's a carpenter, do all this stuff? The carpenter in Jesus' day is an artisan class. An artisan class, there were only two classes of people. There wasn't really a middle class like is so American for us. But in Jesus' day, there's an upper class, a lower class. Jesus is an artisan, so he lives in this lower class. How can he see himself as God's son? How can he talk to us about freedom? We're just a bunch of peasants, and all he's doing is drawing in more peasants. And boy, we're astounded, and we're just not really expecting anything great out of this anymore. Who would ever think that Britney Spears could tell us about freedom and has something to show and to say to us about it. And again, it all seems like conservatorship. But this is not why we've been gathered together before the gospel. The gospel is about freedom. Our lives as Americans are about freedom. And these two things are supposed to work together. They don't always because we've made it complicated. But today is Sunday, a Sabbath day, July 4th, our Independence Day. It's a day for us to hear about freedom again and to be offered the opportunity to live into it. Jesus is astounded at the uh, people who see him as just a mad person with mental health issues and can't you know, be possibly a person who brings freedom. He's astounded. And so uh, as Mark unfolds, he gathers his disciples to him, people who have lived so recently in a place of need and of expectancy, a place of freedom because all they had was dependence on God. And he gathers them and he sends them out together as God's people. And he gives them a reminder before he sends them out. And there's a couple of ways to talk about this reminder. The reminder is that they were to go out without extra stuff. They just take a staff, a pair of shoes, one shirt. They don't go out with extra money, with extra food. They're going to go on a trip without all of the stuff. I just went to the beach. I can tell you the whole back of my overly large car was completely filled with stuff for this week. But this is not really the American way to go out and depend on the person that you're with and each other and to just uh, sort of depend on others for care. But this is the reminder of what it means to be free. Now, interpreters have talked about this text, this story, in a couple of different They've talked about how, and this is the traditional way of talking about it, that um, uh, the seriousness of it, that this is a call to go back to dependence just on God and on Christ and to remember how as people with that guilt whispering into our ears, we at one time or another have lived in expectancy of freedom. We've hoped for God to free us and we've lived in this place. And that Christ's call in sending us out is to no longer be dependent on our beautiful cars or our beautiful stuff and to be stripped back to just that place of expectancy and hope. To ourselves in our own way be the poor and the huddled masses and the tired and to know that only God can offer us the 
freedom, the confession and forgiveness and the life that we need. And so God is calling us back to that place. And so this is about who we're putting our dependence on. And if we don't experience freedom, maybe that's because we haven't put that in Christ strongly enough of late. And so it's a call back to remembering our need and remembering our freedom that God alone cares for us in those needs. It's one of the ways that this has been talked about. One of the other ways is kind of a little bit more interesting to me. It's a newer way of talking about this, that Jesus is part of an artisan class. He's been surrounded by uh, peasants, and he looks to them, people of the lower class, and he says to them, you know, you should go out without extra food. You should go out without extra shoes, without extra clothes, which is kind of ironic because they don't have any of that stuff anyway. Maybe our freedom can be found in listening to a voice of irony and playfulness a little bit more than that serious voice that keeps whispering into our ears, feel guilty, uh, you're mad, you can't possibly pull off the things that you say you're going to do. You might talk about freedom, but in reality you can't accomplish anything. And this is those voices of seriousness that to be free, our call today is to cast off. Jesus calls the disciples and tells them their worth and looks at them with a little bit of irony in his eyes and says, you know, to really go out and live in freedom, you shouldn't bring extra stuff with you which is pretty ironic considering that they're from the peasant class and don't have extra stuff anyway. Maybe it's time for us to go back to a place of playfulness. Maybe, I mean, they're dad jokes. You know, it's certainly a dad joke to say, uh, I bought a pack of Haribu, Star Wars Haribus, and they were all Wookiees, and so they were too chewy for me. You know, maybe that's too playful, and maybe, but maybe that's the place where freedom begins. It's a movement away from that voice of seriousness that tells us what we can't do. And it's a movement into a place of reminding uh, ourselves of when we lived in all sorts of expectancy and how much fun we let ourselves have when we're in that place. This is the place that you and I are called back to today, Sunday, July 4th our Independence Day in faithfulness and as citizens. You see, for too long, we've allowed ourselves to live under a conservatory ship. And I'm not talking about a conservatory ship that tells us that we have to wear masks or whatever. That's not quite it. What I'm talking about is the conservatory ship of that serious voice that whispers in our ear that we're not good enough and that while we talk about freedom, we don't have enough money yet to do that or we have to work harder or too many obligations or you haven't done enough or you don't look good enough and it restricts us and it really, honestly, at the end of the day, puts us in a place where we're actually more in a conservatory ship than in a place of freedom. And so we're called here on Sunday, July 4th, to playfully believe that Britney Spears can preach it better than anybody else. Starting in 2008 and all the years since, and part of the Britney Spears story is hashtag free Britney. That people believe that she should be able to live in freedom. And I guess I would say I believe that too, that she should receive help for anything that she needs help for, that that's part of what it means to be an American, that she's entitled to be the pop star that she is, and she's good enough as she is, and that for those that look to her, uh, she should be free and able to buy kitchen cabinets if that's what she wants to do. And that in that story is the gospel. And it's a certain amount of playfulness to believe that Britney Spears is the example for us. That a conservatory ship is not the place where we should dwell and that all that seri seriousness is not the place for us. And so today is a prayer before God on the Sabbath to give it up. And it's to hope to live into our Independence Day. Our Independence Day is going to mean some playfulness. Do you remember Johnny Cash, Bob Hope, and Steve Jobs? 
Now that they're gone, there's no hope, no jobs, no cash, right? A little bit of playfulness to see that and how that might fit the world we live in now. And to believe that you and I are the people who are loved by God and given resources and that the voice that whispers in our ears is untrue because we are the sent ones and we are the ones who are part of being made whole and making others whole. And where there is no cash, no hope, no jobs, well, we have solutions for those. And this is freedom. And this is our Independence Day. And this is how we live into it. By the belief that Britney Spears preaches it better than any of the rest of us. And it's not hashtag free Britney. It's hashtag free St. Stephen. Or the life of expectancy in your kingdom. Hashtag free John. Hashtag free fill in the blank. Because today is our Independence Day. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, giver of our independence and our freedom before God, you are the bread of life. We ask that you would remind us that when you call us as your people, you fill us with your spirit and you tell us, you proclaim to us that we are free. We're free as Americans indeed, but we're also free before God. We're both. And so before you, we have received more than we could ever ask, a reminder of who we are. And just as you have nourished us in this reminder, we ask that you would strengthen us so that we may love others with your own love for us. Let us live into the freedom you've given us. For it's in your name that we pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Go in peace, enjoy your holiday, and remember that you are the body of